Um, all right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Sadir Zala. I'm IBM software engineer uh, in United States. Uh, I'm also a project technical lead for two projects, Tasca Parser and Heat Translator. Both are projects under the orchestration Heat program, the main program. Um, I have a pleasure to have Matthew Welton. He's a software engineer at Sun in France, and we have a uh, Alvaro here. He is a computer scientist at uh, CISIC, which is a uh, Spanish National Research Council. It's the biggest council uh, in Spain uh, for uh, typically uh, for for physical physics and uh, other scientific uh, research. Um, we uh, uh, we are missing uh, Miguel Caballer. Um, he he could not make it because of uh, project related work. Um, they're having some reviews related to this talk, so he's not here. Um, so uh, yesterday we had a you know a really good keynote in the morning. Uh, I think most of us were there in the audience, uh, you know, and, and it was about interop challenge. In, uh, in in like you know different OpenStack clouds, and it was a great show, right? You know they, they proved on the stage that um, you know interoper uh, interoperability is is very important, right? And and it could be done. Uh, now there is no relationship between in that interop challenge and what we are talking today, but uh, I want to mention because uh, interoperability is very important, and that's what uh, you know. Uh, is related to this talk. So, in this presentation, uh, we will uh, we will talk about you know how we are handling an interoperability challenge across heterogeneous clouds. You know, not just open set clouds from different providers. Uh, it's cloud, uh, you know, made of uh, OpenStack, Open Nebula, uh, some other proprietary clouds. Uh, how you can uh, you know deploy uh, with uh, you know single modeling concept into different clouds, so we will uh, demonstrate uh, uh, some of the work uh, we're doing uh, you know with with uh, Strong and you know CISIC and other institute for the project Indigo. Uh, we'll talk about Tasca. Uh, we'll talk about Tasca Parson Heat Translator and how they are used to deploy uh, workloads in OpenStack, especially right. Uh, that's where we're doing some integration work. And uh, you know, Alvaro and Matthew will uh, will give a deep dive into Project Indigo, which is a large-scale uh, project, you know, for heterogeneous clouds, uh, and it's focused for the scientific community in Europe. Um, and we will show the use case to model a full stack uh, uh, with Tasca. All right. Um, so Tasca, it's a topology and orchestration specification for cloud applications. Uh, that's what it stands for. Um, what is Tasca? It's a very important open standard, um, and it's enabling interoperability, right? Like I just said, interoperability is is important, right? Especially uh, the heterogeneous clouds. Um, and, and and Tasca is supported by a large number of companies uh, around the world. Uh, I'll be covering that in next slides. Uh, Tasca has its own domain specific language. Uh, it's on DSL, it's in YAML right now. Uh, and it's not tied to any specific cloud, right? You know, it, 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 it is interoperable. I mean, you can use Tasca for you know, one cloud or other, uh, depending on the orchestration engine uh, support. Um, on the diagram, I have uh, you know, things like node types. So Tasca has various node types, uh, mostly uh, normative node types, and there are you know, uh, easy extension uh, with custom types, you know, non-normative types, right? Um, each, uh, all node types are related to each other in some way, and uh, types typically offer some capabilities um, and interfaces uh, to provide implementation uh, for, for your workload. Uh, and there are policies that can be applied on to, uh, you know, on, on a single node or, or group of nodes. Uh, underneath there, I have a you know small example of how you model uh, a web application, right? Node.js app. We, uh, we we have a real uh, uh, template out there. We you know with the with the PayPal uh, sample piece applications, 
but it shows just the modeling concept that uh, Node.js application can be hosted on Node.js server, that's a logical node, and, then, uh, and which uh, in turn is, uh, is hosted on app, uh, app server, right, which is the physical virtual machine. And the same way, the Node.js app is uh, it's connected to database, the MongoDB in this case, which is hosted on another logical node uh, for MongoDB MS, and which is again hosted on Mongo server, a virtual machine. Uh, here I will, I'll briefly cover uh, the important milestone and, and some of the contribution uh, from, from across the world, right? So task work uh, is not new, you know, it was started uh, five years back, uh, six years back, in 2013 there was a the XML format out and uh, it was published, but hey, that was 2013, right? You know, we have uh, made so much progress in cloud world, you know, AWS was progressing, OpenStack was already became foundation in 2012, um, and you know, it was emerging as a standard uh, in, in the open source world as in cloud, and what do you do with XML? You know, nobody supports XML. Um, you know, the, it's either JSON or, or, or YAML, I mean, typically. And, and that's where the decision was made that, you know what, um, XML is, is just increasing complexities. And the, the best way to go is, uh, you know, through either JSON or YAML, and the choice was YAML. You know, it, it's more human readable, and, you know, it's been used across uh, different projects in OpenStack. So the work was started the same year uh, to, you know, create a Tosca symbol profile we call uh, to make things a little simpler, you know, taking out the complexities uh, which were introduced in the XML format um, and in YAML, right? So fast forward, uh, the first version uh, is out now. Uh, it's OSS Tosca approved version which came out in June 2016. Uh, but before that, we had several uh, working drafts out there, you know, and people are using it. Uh, uh, and, and things are going a little bit faster now, you know, for the 1.1, it's already under, under like a, a public review right now in the final stage. Uh, there is another task profile work going on that's for uh, network function virtualization, the NFE profile. Uh, it simply extends the simple profile in YAML for NFE specific workloads. And, you know, there is a standard uh, stable draft is already out there. Uh, with company-wise, you can see there are so many companies uh, you know, contributing to TASCA in one way or other. You know, uh, there are many mem uh, member, TASCA technical committee members out there. Some of them contribute to, to, you know, with the modeling work, some review work. There are several different groups, uh, you know, uh, for simple profile, uh, focused on monitoring, focused on uh, container work, uh, you know, et cetera. All right, TASCA parser, right. So, um, it's again in 2013, you know, when we decide to go with YAML uh, and, and integrate in, uh, into OpenStack. You know, the best route we came up with uh, by means of, uh, you know, um, uh, parsing the templates, uh, defining Tasca, and, and translating into heat orchestration language, uh, hot. Um, so that's the, in 2014, early 2014, February, March time frame, we created a new project, Stackware project, which later became uh, uh, official uh, OpenStack projects. And uh, now we have two projects, Tasca Parser and Heat Translator. And those are the two projects which helps to deploy your, uh, your Tasca workloads into OpenStack using uh, Heat. All right, so Tasca Parser is, it's, 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 a li it's meant to use as a library. It parses the symbol profile, uh, it parses the NFE profile, uh, and it's a sub-project of uh, the OpenStack Heat project. Um, our approach uh, since last year, uh, you know, before uh, Tokyo Summit, Mintaka Summit, is to have at least uh, two point releases for each uh, uh, project, the Tasca Parson Heat Transfer project. Uh, you know, it's like a rapid, agile development process, uh, you know, to, to code against the spec, uh, to enable a lot of new features, you know, for users or consumers need, right? Uh, so we, this, uh, this release, uh, Newton timeframe, we had a two release, 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. Uh, 0 0.5 was released right after the Austin summit, uh, and, you know, we added a support for, uh, like, Tosca policies and triggers and load balancer, and some of the complex data type, uh, like ports, pack, and, you know, there were some bug fixes, of course. Uh, 0.6 was, 
it was, uh, I would say, it was a major release. Uh, by that time, you know, we have a, we develop a good user base. You know, uh, uh, the folks here they use it. Uh, Tasca parser, uh, OpenStack Tagger project consumes Tasca parser, and uh, we have OP NFE project, uh, the Linux Foundation project. They use Tasca parser, and there are, um, you know, several other companies they are using it uh, just as it is. You know, and that this again, uh, I think Alvaro will cover it, but this supports that uh, interoperability among a heterogeneous cloud. Where you know if it's not OpenStack but uh, Open Nebula, you can just take this piece and you know you do whatever you want to do with it and, and you know deploy it. So point six uh, was a ma major release uh, which came out in August. Uh, we added a Python 3.5 support. Uh, you know that we have a, we have new OpenStack uh, gate job uh, created around that time for 3.5, and we were one of the first projects to enable it. Um, we added support for other uh, other things like task repositories and, and some of the NFE specific stuff. Um, backward compatibility. Uh, initially, we weren't too serious about it, but with, with that release, uh, since many uh, projects uh, and, and you know other companies use it, so we are very serious. Uh, it, they are, you know, anything we do now, uh, it's going to be backward compatible. Uh, you know, with 0.6. Um, and uh, down there, there is a link for the PyPy release. Let me brief a little bit about the heat translator project. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's again uh, a project or translation layer uh, over heat uh, meant to deploy you know, non-heat non -heat templates. Uh, uh, for example, Tasca, you know, the project is focused on Tasca right now, but it can be used for, for you know, any other formats uh, with some of the development contribution. So right now, you know, uh, and that this is our uh, uh, the project Indigo, uh, they use it. You know, you, you can translate it and you, you can deploy it seamlessly with HIT. Uh, we again have the two releases, 0.5 and 0.6. Uh, it comes usually, uh, you know, it comes out usually a few weeks after Tasca parser. So the HIT translator is, uh, came out in May uh, 2016. We added support. Uh, Matthew did a lot of work there for Ansible and Puppet uh, supports, translation supports. Uh, we um, you know, we are well integrated with the OpenStack project, so uh, we're using uh, Glance, for example, right now uh, to, to find the image uh, based on the Tasca cons constraint. If you're familiar with Tasca, you know, there's a constraint uh, like, you know, you just define what kind of distribution you want, uh, what uh, version of OS you want, and, you know, we find the right image, and then we set that in the, you know, heat template. Uh, we're only doing that for flavors, so again, you define your criteria, you know, number of CPUs and, and memory uh, need and all that, and, you know, we set that up uh, in, in the heat templates. Um, and, and we also added uh, automatic deployment uh, during the same time frame, so, you know, it can be deployed like I earlier said. Um, it's, again, uh, backward compatible. Uh, we actually added a new job, get job in heat translator, so every time now, um, we you know update the codes in the translator. It runs against the, the Tasca parser gate and make sure that uh, nothing in Tasca parser which is breaking heat translator. If so, we will fix it you know before uh, like a, a further release. Point six uh, came out uh, just a month back, and uh, again Python 3.5 support. Um, one of the major thing we did was uh, you know in earlier release we were doing automatic deployment uh, using. Uh, uh, you know the environment variable uh, in, in in users en uh, environment. You know like OS uh, uh, user password kind of things. Uh, but we realized, especially, you know, uh, Project Indigo realized that you know uh, for the real deployment we we need to do um, authentication with Keystone. So a lot of work on that. Uh, we are now doing uh, authentication with uh, Keystone Auth library. Um, we, you know, one of the new feature and very important is the translation for auto scaling, right? Uh, we are now uh, supporting, uh, you know, the, the scaling translation from Tasca to Hot, you know, and, and we create, uh, you know, auto scaling resources, you know, some of the monitoring resource like um, Odd. And initially we were only translating to like one template, but now we translate to multiple templates. Um, as it's required, uh, you know, in, in, in many cases uh, for heat, and we're also doing uh, Senlin cluster support now. So uh, you know, the policies can be translated to the, to the Senlin profile as well. Um, um, 
you know, Project Indigo uses Ansible heavily, so uh, we now even support the Ansible roles. That was uh, the support was added uh, by Matthew. Um, one of the, so uh, for the future work, there are so many things going on, but one of the things I would like to mention here is uh, uh, you know, uh, some work in progress for heat translator as a service. So we thought about it in the past, uh, just a few months back. Right now the patch is out there. Uh, but, you know, for, for folks like uh, uh, the, uh, them, you know, for Project Indigo, I think they, they will really get benefited uh, calling APIs directly, uh, you know, so even, even, uh, even Tacker, they, they, they like the idea too. So we have work going on uh, to, to make, uh, you know, the translator as a service as well, you know, on top of uh, the command line tool, which is uh, as of today. Uh, and, and, and the goal is to work on it during this release cycle. Um, again, you know, the PyPy packages are out there, so if you are interested, uh, please feel free to use. A um, lot of other work is going on, uh, but more interesting work um, is, of course, uh, you want to know how these things are getting used, right, to, again, uh, to, to handle the challenge of interoperability, right? across multiple heterogeneous clouds. And that's where I will hand it over to Alvaro. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Alvaro. Thanks. Sure. Thank you, Sadaev. Uh, well, as he said, I work at the Spanish National Research Council. And as Sadaev already said, we are a multidisciplinary institution. I am located in a group that uh, provides support for scientific users to satisfy their, their competing needs. And in this context, we are involved in several European projects. One of them is the Indigo Data Cloud project that uh, its aim is to establish a sustainable infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service for, com for both computing and data that is focused on science and more specifically on scientific users. So we aim to, to satisfy the needs of, of, of science and scientific users. Uh, we are funded under the H2020 program. We started in 2015. Uh, the project is comprised of uh, 26 partners from 11 different countries. We have uh, one of the, I would say, the, the, the biggest research councils and institutions in, in, in Europe, as well as some industrial partners that are also participating. We aim to deploy this, our middleware for heterogeneous infrastructures like OpenStack and Open Nebula, but not, but not only, also for, for commercial providers. And one key aspect of Indigo is that we have driven our, our developments focusing on the requirements from uh, the, use, the scientific users. So we, gather, we do an initial gathering of requirements from 11 multidisciplinary communities like uh, LiveWatch, for example, which is in, uh, um, works in, in bioinformatics, or for example, WLCG, high energy physics, astrophysics, uh, humanities, and, and so on. So, as I said, we try to drive the developments focusing on, on the user's needs. We have defined the, the, our architecture focusing on, on them to satisfy their, their, their requirements. And then we have defined the software components that are needed to be done, to be developed or, or, or updated to, to, to be helpful for them. So the idea is that we will develop uh, open software software that will fill the technology gaps that we have found that are not covered in the current infrastructures that are uh, targeted for science, uh, reusing an existing, ex uh, an, sorry, reusing and extending existing components whenever possible. We don't want to reinvent things. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we will try to reuse as much as possible. We will, of course, develop the missing pieces of software whenever it is necessary. And we will try to exploit the experience from previous projects, previous experiences, previous uh, <coughs> infrastructures like the grid, for example. As I said, we try to be multidisciplinary, so we will not focus on one science uh, discipline only. We try to, to, to gather as much user communities as possible. And we try to be vendor neutral as well through first of all through the adoption of standards 
and secondly, through the promotion of standards. So we try to be interoperable between clouds. As I said, we have open Nebula clouds, open stack clouds, commercial providers, and one key aspect is the interoperability. Uh, so just for you to know, this is uh, our, our user communities. We have 11 that are marked with the Indigo, Indigo logo. We, they are distributed all over Europe, and we have several uh, S3s that are research, special research infrastructures in Europe that are cycling red involved directly in the, in the project. So how are we leveraging Tosca, and why do we need Tosca? Well, first of all, because for deploying these scientific applications, orchestration is needed because the scientific applications sometimes are complex, so we need this kind of orchestration. We need to manage the interactions between the different components, the workflows, and so on. Secondly, uh, this has to be done in an interoperable infrastructure, so interoperability for us is a key aspect, uh, targeting initially at OpenStack and Open Nebula, but also on commercial providers. So we, do, we did a first uh, evaluation of the available options for orchestration. We found, of course, uh, OpenStack Heat and CloudFormation, but both are tied to a specific implementations. Heat uses HOT, its, it's, it's language, and CloudFormation is for AWS. So Tosca seemed to be a, a good option for us because we could uh, make a definition of the topology of the infrastructure, but we could also make uh, a definition of the user applications. Um, another aspect that make Tosca interesting and attractive for us is that it has an existing code base. So we have the Tosca parser and the heat translator, uh, these two components that are separated so that we can reuse, for example, the Tosca parser for translating uh, into other, other languages if we need it. Um, and the last point is uh, being a standard. This is an important thing is that it is uh, support for, from different communities. It is backed by industry and then the industry is using it with partners like uh, IBM, but not only. So it is a standard that is actually being developed and being, and being used. So how we do leverage uh, Tosca? So we define some custom types for covering the scientific use cases. Uh, we have extended the Tosca simple profile in, in YAML with our, our own custom types that are in, in that GitHub, GitHub repo. And we use Tosca to launch these uh, use cases for, for, and the applications for the users. Some examples, but not only, are, for example, the deployment of an uh, elastic cluster for, for batch processing. Right now, we support SLARM, we support uh, Turkey and HT Condor, but it can be extended to, to other uh, batch systems, like, for example, I don't know, SunGrid Engine, well, SunGrid Engine, no, Oracle Grid Engine. Um, we support, for example, the deployment of an Apache Mesos cluster, uh, the Galaxy Portal, which is a data-intensive application for biomedical research. We support the deployment of this application through, through Galaxy. Um, for Indigo specific jobs like uh, deploy, I don't know, Mesos, Marathon, and, and Kronos for managing our infrastructure services. And with this, I hand out to Matthew that will go more into the details. Hi there. So, um, Alvaro presents you the different use case. So, now I will present you uh, a workflow or how it would work for uh, one of the use cases. Uh, so, for example, here we are talking infrastructure level. So, when we say user, it's not directly the end user. For example, the end user would mainly like to run uh, Python notebooks uh, on a cluster or something like that. Uh, here we are talking about Indigo infrastructure users that want to deploy uh, a stack so a user can use it afterwards. So, what uh, is happening is that we have integrators uh, that are creating Tosca templates. Um, that defines this kind of application stack. Um, then a user can select one of this uh, set of templates, parameterize it a, a bit um, to f fit their needs. For example, uh, number of nodes, uh, do we want auto scaling or stuff like that. Um, then this, Tosca, uh, this request is sent to a multi site orchestrator. Uh, this multi-site orchestrator will choose uh, cloud and learners that have the available resource uh, needed. 
it will then send uh, the Tosca templates and the parameter to this underlying clouds. So here we have uh, two examples of orchestration engine. On the left, we have uh, infrastructure manager, which is a more generic orchestrator than HIT since it works with driver and support um, uh, pu public cloud and also private clouds like Open Nebula. Um, on the other side, we have the OpenStack HIT component, which kind of do the, uh, have the same principle, but it's more specific to OpenStack. Um, so after you the site it shows, if it's OpenStack, it's going through the HIT translator. Then it uh, gets out hot templates that are sent to HIT and deployed for the users. And uh, the same kind of stuff is happening with the infrastructure manager, except that uh, they don't have a specific language, they use directly Tosca um, as an input. Why do we need a translator on the OpenStack layer for now? One of the goal also is later to uh, perhaps try to integrate this translator directly in the HIT pipeline so it can be easy to plug in inside HIT and, those, uh, and we don't have to go through a translation, a manual translation layer. Manual, let's say manual. Thank you. Uh, so I'm then going to talk a bit uh, on the work in progress uh, that I'm doing on the translator for the Indigo project. So currently, as Sadef said, we have uh, supports from scalable resource. However, it's mainly at the server level. It means if you have deployments um, um, to install software or to start software, for example, defined on your Tenska template, it will not be ended right now. Um, so we wrote a generic framework that will handle all these dependency problems, like, uh, for example, gathering the software deployment, put it inside a specific stack with the, the uh, defined node, compute node. Um, and this framework can then be mapped onto a heat resource that could be either a resource group, auto-scaling group, or a Sanly cluster, for example. Uh, another impro improvement that we are working on is support for endpoints. When you have a compute node, you can find endpoint capability uh, that will drive uh, then the network related part of the deployed server. So mainly, for example, choosing uh, a network where we want to deploy it and which port you want to open to the outside. So a quick overview of this. So let's say we have a scalable compute node. So on the left, we can see uh, that it's scalable because we have the scalable capabilities with a count of two and uh, an install creep, an Ansible install creep that would take a pass as an input. On the output, uh, we will have uh, a resource group with the same count that will reference uh, sub-templates. And you can find the sub-templates on the right. And on the right, that you can see that you have indeed the server, but you also have uh, the software deployment uh, component needed to launch the scripts with the install pass that was passed to the, to the templates. So let's go through the network part now. So uh, let's say we have a compute not defined Tosca. Um, you can define the, the, the define the network name where it will be provisioned. Um, so you have public in uppercase is a, um, is a keyword, so if you put that, it, will, it should ask uh, the underlying cloud what is the official current public network uh, where you can provision um, and use it. So that is what the translator is doing. It's calling Neutron to know the current public network. So uh, I put it as a one here, of course, and, um, and it launched an instance on it. You also get translation of the um, of the port that you need opened through a security group. 
Um, and regarding the network name, if it's not a keyword like public, you can also directly specify the name of the network that needs to be used. For example, if you define a private overlay network already, or if you define a private network inside the Tosca templates, for example, which is possible, um, then these networks will directly be used without trying to talk too much one or something like that. Ah, here it is. Um, so currently, the it's translator with several several um, configuration management tool, so uh, scripts, Ansible, Puppet. Um, you can also define artifacts on compute nodes um, that would be mapped to a Galaxy Ansible world. So instead of having to uh, embed your Galaxy Ansible worlds inside your image. You can just define it there as an artifact, and it will be installed um, by your software config underneath. And then you can use uh, those roles, those Ansible roles, uh, inside your, for example, install Zabbix uh, script that we have here. So that's all for the details. Um, so, uh, current status in the Indigo Data Clouds Tosca support. So, uh, the first use case uh, are working. Uh, so, this includes, uh, so uh, as I said earlier, some stuff to deploy the cluster. So, we currently support Slurms and MISOs officially, and some other work, some are underway. Uh, we are good contributor, upstream contributors to the various problem, uh, projects after IBM, of course. <laughs> uh, we try to re reuse uh, whatever we can, uh, like the command OpenStack clients or the Keystone library if needed. Um, currently, as a backend, we support several clouds. Our work currently, uh, we can only deploy a full cluster in one, in one cloud. The final goal would be to, um, to be able to launch a cluster uh, and scale a, 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 a cluster across several clouds. So the main issue here, and we have to deal with uh, network and communication between the nodes and the master on different clouds. And if we don't provision directly on a public network, it can be a bit difficult. So, uh, like I said, we are still working on the custom types. So, uh, for example, Torque is coming, HT Condor is planned. Um, so, for each of these templates, we need to check if it's well supported in the hit translator. Um, and the end goal is also to deploy to more sites. Currently, we are mainly dealing with Open Nebula and OpenStack, uh, but we are aiming to try it on a public cloud too. We have a good collaboration um, with the upstream project uh, and with the PTL uh, SADEV. <laughs> so um, that's an, uh, a nice thing. Uh, and on, another work would be to provide the translator as a service endpoint, because currently it's, well, it's a Python library and you can't really use it outside of the Python work, uh, world. So it will be a uh, nice stuff to have. Thank you. Let's go to the questions. All right, uh, thank, uh, question, yeah. Hello, so thank you for the presentation. So um, my understanding is that um, Tosca was specified at, at the same time that HIT was created. So I'm wondering if now that Tosca has become a standard, it makes sense mm. to implement uh, Tosca or to support Tosca directly in HIT rather than having a translator. And another question I wanted to ask is uh, if you want to support multiple clouds at the same time, you require node types and, and some other things. So I'm wondering if there is any plan or you already have a common location uh, to, encode, uh, to, to encourage uh, code reusage. Yeah. Uh, can you please repeat the second question? Yes, yeah, so, so if you want to support like 
in your first slide you had MongoDB and maybe you want to support some other databases and mm -hmm. you need a compute node in some cloud and in a different cloud for all these node types that you need to support. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a common location that uh, I can uh, refer to to encourage the reusability because um, some other people that might have the same need for a, a, the same node as you Absolutely. might re-implement it instead of uh, going to the, the one that you already have. Absolutely, absolutely. If, yeah. if you go to the Indigo DC account on GitHub, you will found a Tosca templates repository and a Tosca type repository that are all over work. So uh, you will find the template for the clusters and also for some of our uh, more uh, data science and, and user uh, software. So yeah, it's all publicly available. You Try, you can type Indigo DC, uh, Indigo DC on GitHub. The URL and is here. The, the URL is um, here. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay, great. So, and, and regarding the let, other question? And let me yeah, yeah, go to the question. Go oh, sorry, go ahead if you want. No, no, for okay. the hit So, question, for the so. first question, right? Um, I know you say that since we have open standard now, why heat cannot use it straight, right? Instead of hot, right? And instead of translation, let it do straight. Well, the, the, the problem was, and that's how we started translation project, uh, Tosca being specification, you know, uh, it, it, it go through, it's a lot of time consuming, honestly, right? You know, a uh, lot of companies participate in the modeling work, right? Um, and it takes a little bit time, right? Um, HEAT has its own language HEART, which has actually the Tosca and HEART, if you see, there are some similarities. Uh, our route, and the other challenge was some of the open source components uh, like Glance or Nova, right? There is not enough support uh, for certain, uh, you know, constraint-based support, right? Uh, uh, like, like I said, you know, he uses image and flavors, for example. Uh, what's his task is a little bit low level. You can specify the constraints, you know, uh, for the flavor and for the image. So. I think the, the approach we came up with is, you know, modify heat natively, like you said, and do as less as translation possible. And as a result, uh, heat, I know if you're familiar with heat, uh, different resources, right? We actually, uh, the Tosca team, uh, work with the heat guys, right? And we added a new resources like software config or, you know, software deployment resources, which are, which can be used for any at, at application level uh, orchestration. So they were actually added, uh, and honestly, for Tasca to make the translation easy, right? Uh -huh. You know. So so that's the approach we are having. You know, uh, it's it's not that easy to move. You know, uh, from from like hot to Tasca. You know, in heat. Uh, but I think this approach is working well. That we keep con we continue uh, adding code in heat to provide as much as support uh, for Tasca uh, types, uh, you know, or, or, or close to it, into it. So the translation can be done very easily uh, without, you know, to, without uh, much of breakage or, you know, uh, mapping yeah, yeah, problem, so, right? So yep. Even exactly. if you have two different languages, uh, you are uh, getting to a point in which the semantics are similar, so the translation is easy, as you said. Exactly, you know, uh -huh. making, yep. Uh, second thing, yeah, like uh, Matthew said, that those, uh, some of the examples are available on Indigo sites, and, and I would uh, even recommend to look at the Tasca parser GitHub repo. Uh, the MongoDB use case is there. You know, we actually have a very uh, complex use case, which is working good with HEAT. Um, and HEAT translator uh, GitHub repo, which actually even has the hot, uh, the translator hot templates out there, too, if somebody wants to use. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's it, it, like, you know, we have use cases a little bit uh, more complicated than the example I showed, right? The MongoDB example, you know, we actually have a ELK stack. So we have Node, we have MongoDB, we have Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, like five different uh, virtual machines. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, the app server, Node app server has RSYS log, for example, uh, you know, model with the workload so that it can be monitored. And, and then, uh, uh, you know, with the Kibana, the dashboard, you can see what's going on, right? But those templates are out there. So like you said, you know, instead of somebody writing again, uh, they can easily use it from there. Okay, well, well, thank you one, very much. One thing that 
Uh, one thing that we wanted to do is uh, to, I think Matthew already mentioned it, to deploy, to develop a new service that will consume the Tosca templates directly and they will make the translation on the fly and submit it directly to HIT so that there would be an endpoint where you can submit the Tosca template, it would do the translation under the hood and submit it to HIT directly. So you mean uh, the the way there is some kind of API for cloud formation, you can yeah. have an API yeah. for Tosca. Okay. We, we plan to do the, this we uh, are separately for, for, from HIT. Uh, so that it can be developed more, more easily and, and so on, but uh, more or less the same. Yeah, it's like uh, EC2, for example, for Nova, deploy a different service that make this translation and so that it's easier to reuse uh, the translator, to use the translator outside the Python uh, ecosystem, the Python, the Python world. Okay, yep. great. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. you. Christian, please. So how do the um, artifacts that are specified in the Tosca template make it into the server that's installed? And then is there any th standardization around how that is handled by the, um, by the server? Uh, currently, when we are talking about artifact, it's more deployment artifact or stuff like that, that uh, data. Uh, the data is another subject, of course, of the project. But it's not at all at the Tosca level, it's more, uh, which is more compute related. Uh, we have some software called I think One Data that we uh, use to handle the cross site uh, data sharing. I don't have a lot more information <laughs> regarding that. So, so let's say currently artifacts are more uh, implementation details on, of the deployment than data. It's more configuration and stuff like that, or on cyber walls, like I said. I don't know if it answers your questions. Yeah, I, I was just wondering if there's any uh, um, generic way that, that the, the things that are, um, are not infrastructure, you know, the, the software that you're yeah. really trying to install are. Uh, 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 more like an <laughs> application level, you're saying? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so you can specify that in task or template, right? Like right. you said, you know, the interface is right. Uh, the dip, at the deployment time with translator, you know, what we do, again, HIT, see, that's another thing where HIT and TASC are, are two different things, right? You know, HIT does not have you know, inter, uh, uh, interfaces, right, uh, as part of the modeling, right? right. So, uh, but it's again, to support TASCA, we created uh, uh, some of the hooks, and uh, with, with the resources like software config or software component, you can actually specify those uh, deployment artifacts in, in, in heart, and that's what we, we are doing right now, you know. So anything which is mentioned uh, for implementation, any any scripts, you know, uh, or any other artifacts, right? But cu yeah, currently for the data themselves, it would be like uh, sending the pass and then having something underneath handling the access of the data, for example, if you mean about data. Yeah, so it's just about the, you have essentially links available in, in the Nova metadata, for example. Uh, E eventually, yes. Yeah. With with with, with the, uh, we are heat, right? Right. I right, mean, so heat is the one we we was going to exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank sure. You. Thanks. More question? No, we are there with the time as well. So, uh, but feel uh, feel free to reach us. You know, uh, we are uh, always available on the IRC channel, heat uh, uh, dash translator, and you know, emails or or you know, uh, launch pad or you know, anything, right? So, well thank you guys, thanks again so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you.